Hi everyone, we're going to do another short video about linking because um, we had some questions in class on Monday about linking. Sorry it took me a little bit longer to make the video than I had hoped, but today was kind of a busy day. But who cares? Here we go to linking. Okay, first I'm going to answer Sherry's question about linking on WordPress. And as you notice, I'm using the cheat screen as much as I hate the cheat screen, but I'm going to use it anyway because that's what a lot of you are seeing because WordPress.com is not letting you see the, the great dashboard that we had hoped for. So, okay, so let's dig in. So I've set up a post here that I hope to publish. It's a wonderful post, and of course, as all of you know how much I love to talk about the election, we're throwing in the election here. So I've written just like a little sentence about Trump appearing on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and I'll resist the urge to comment on that very much and just say, watch it yourself and decide for yourself what you think of it. Okay, so here we go. You can see it's had 7 million views. Oh my gosh, that many people want to see uh, Jimmy Fallon mess up his hair. So when we want to share a video like this that we see, you notice they have share and embed. It's good to know about the embed because notice the HTML iframe. That's actually defining an object that we can actually put on the page. Um, WordPress is making this a lot easier for us. We don't have to mess with iframes and codes. It does all of the hard work for us. So what we can do is we can just get the link. That's our URL. And remember, that's Uniform Resource Locator. And you'll notice they have a shortened version of what's actually appearing up here in the full address bar. So I can use either, either one of these addresses and they will get us to this video to watch. So let's copy that link. And then I'm going to go here. So now remember what we want to do. We don't want to just paste it in there, right? Because that's ugly, because nobody wants to see that in your text. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to highlight the key text that we want to be linkable. And remember, you want to link the relevant text, because again, that's another clue for Google. So in this case, I'm actually talking about the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Um, I probably wouldn't highlight more than five words for a link. Like we don't want to link this entire sentence because that looks kind of ugly. Um, it's usually better to highlight just the key phrase that you're wanting to connect if it will cooperate. So once you've highlighted the text, that's when you do the insert link. And then I put in my URL. Now, Usability studies argue over whether you should have it open in a new tab. I like to open, when you're going to another site, I like to have it open in a new tab. That just seems, that feels right to me. Um, because we're moving more towards a mobile environment, um, some usability experts say, no, we should keep it in the same window regardless of what we're linking to. I'll let you decide that. Um, the reason, the rationale behind not opening a new window or tab is that you never want to take away control from the user. And by automatically creating a window, you're taking that control away. Um, to me, it seems intuitive to have it open up in a new window. So that's what I'll do. And there we go. And now I have this wonderful link that when I click, it will do that. Now, the beauty of the cheat screen, one of the th good things about the new version of WordPress, what it does, I can also insert the link. Remember that whole um, embedding thing where we were going to have to put the iframe in there and do all that? With the new version of WordPress, you don't have to do that. If you just paste the link in there, it automatically does all the embedding for you. Now remember, if you want to see what's going on underneath the hood, you can actually, instead of visual, go to the HTML tab and see what HTML has been inserted. And now you can actually read some of this, right? So remember, M stands for emphasis. So everything that's wrapped from here to here, that's going to be italicized. And then we want to make sure our, our tags are nested. So then we have an anchor tag. It tells us where we're going to go. And now there's this new animal. See this target? Remember we talked about attributes? So what the target does, that basically is the code that says, hey, open this up in a new window or a new tab, however the browser is set, but I want to open it up in something new. Um, and that's what that does. And then you notice that wraps the entire Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So now it looks like what I had hoped. 
Now the weird thing about WordPress is it's not showing us the entire code for how it's set up the iframe. Um, and again, that's the cheat screen that's, that's hiding that from us. When we use the full version with the dashboard, what it will do is it will show up, um, WordPress has its own markup language that's called short codes. And so this will actually look like a little short code and it will, it will use these kinds of brackets and it will have a specification about YouTube. More detail than you wanted, but that's, that's what it does. And that's how you put a link in your WordPress. Okay, now I've also had some questions about adding links in Thimble. And we've done this very little, not very much, but we've done it somewhat. And you'll notice on the About You assignment, I talk about a navigation scheme, which is basically, I want you to think about how are you going to link the pages together. And if we look at any web page, so let's say we go to CNN. And remember I told you to think about web pages in chunks, right? So what I have here is if I look up here, I have a header. And the header has built into it, here's the logo. So that's probably its own chunk in the code. And then here I have all of the navigation. That's my navigation bar. So that's going to be another chunk. And then I have this if it will scroll, it's adding all the ads. I picked a bad site, sorry. Look at that, the spinning wheel of death. They're loading me with ads. Thank you, CNN. Okay, so this ad is probably a chunk, an annoying chunk that I would do div ID equals annoying. And then down here we have our articles, which is gonna be another chunk, okay? So think in terms of chunks, logo chunk, navigation chunk, ad chunk, annoying chunk if we want to call it that, and then the article chunks. So now on our simple page, what do we have? We have our header section, Jonathan Groves, Media Geek. So I have my header, there's that chunk. Then I have all of this content, right? Which is my article. I just called it article. You can call it different things for what, whatever you want to use it for article, aside, those different kinds of things. There are different tags you can use. Remember, we could also name it ourselves. So I could call it main. But then what I need to do is when I close it, I just need to close it with a div because the div is the main element. This is the attribute, okay? So I have a main section. So I have a header, I have a main section, and I have that little itty bitty footer with our H6, and those are our chunks. But lo and behold, we have no navigation. So when I say a navigation scheme, I want you to think about how do we link all of the pages together, okay? So what we need to do, what do you think the navigation section is gonna be called? That chunk, nav. Very good, so now we'll add a nav. And basically, remember we talked in class that when you're constructing a navigation bar, it's basically a list. It's a list of pages. So our first page, we're gonna add href, I wanna link. Now don't ever forget, the first thing that you should put in there is probably your home page. Now there's two schools of thought on this. Well, there's more than two probably, but I'm gonna just focus on two. You can have the home page Oh, that's ugly. And then I'm going to add another one. A H ref equals about. Because I've got, if you look over here, I've got an index page and an about page. HTML, about. There you go. So now I have two things. Now I realize it's going to be ugly. It's not going to look nice. And that's just how it goes. So. At this stage, I just want you to focus on functionality. Don't worry, obsess about it looking really ugly. You just want to think in terms of function and structure at this point, because remember, HTML is just about structure. Now, we haven't really defined this. We've said it's a nav bar, but remember I said we want to think of a nav bar as an unordered list, right? Okay, now I have to move this because I got to wrap that chunk in my unordered list. And these are the items in my list, right? Because conceptually, that's how we're thinking about these things. Okay, I'll put it here. Woohoo. 
And the other thing that does is it gives us the nice little bullets too. Okay. Now again, it's going to be ugly because what it's going to do is what I've done. Remember the difference between block elements and inline elements. And what block elements do, and that's what list items are, what block items do, they add a return. So when you go over here, see I've got a return after them. Now later, we can add CSS that can change that behavior. We can tell it, don't act like a block element anymore. We actually want you to put them in the same line. There's a way to do that through CSS. Anything you want to do stylistically, you can pretty much do in CSS. So don't panic when the HTML doesn't do exactly what you would like it to do. Now remember how I said there's two schools of thought on how to handle these different uh, on a navigation. One thing that people will do sometimes is you will take this out, the link, and notice that grays this out. What that is is that's a subtle cue that you're on the home page because who wants to click to the page they're already on, right? There's no reason to do that. So we can gray that out and it's this subtle cue of orienting the user. You're always wanting to think about where should we be putting the user. So now let's copy this bit of code, right? We have our navigation bar on this page, oops, but we don't have it. Did you see that mistake I made? Cause I like deleted it. Remember when you do that, you do something you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do that. Remember com control Z or command Z brings back what you just did. It's the great undo button. So don't ever forget that. Control Z, Command Z. Okay, in this case, I'm copying it because when I go to the About page, there's no menu. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a menu right there, and now I have a menu. And now there's consistency, right? So on the index page, I have that, and on this, I have that. Oh, look at that. My header isn't consistent because I didn't put Media Geek. Let me add Media Geek. So I have consistent header. There we go. So now I have Media Geek. Now I got that. Now the only thing I have now is I'm linking to my about page but not my home page. So that's my my navigation scheme is not working. So I have to add that. And then it allows me to choose my index page so I don't make a typo because my fat fingers make typos all the time. I'm going to close this. Woohoo! And then I'm going to gray out the page that I'm on. Don't you love coding with groves? Okay. And then we do this. Oops, got an extra tag in there. Now, okay, so now I have these two pages. So now we can test our page in this preview window, right? So now when I click on the About page, it takes me to the About page. Woohoo! And now when I click on the Home page, it takes me back to the Home page. Woohoo! Now, did you notice the other inconsistency on my About page? I forgot to capitalize my M. How dare I? Okay, so now I got that. I can save that. And we're good. So that's how you add a link in Thimble. That's what I mean by a navigation scheme. You can add that to your pages. And what you're going to want to do, notice all of your pages are here in the same directory. That's basically what you're wanting to do. Um, so you can publish it here. Or you notice you can also export the project to a zip file so you can export that and put it in your Dropbox folder and I can find it there. Um, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow and we can talk about this more tomorrow, but give this a shot. Play around with it a little bit and see if you can make this work and we'll talk about it tomorrow in class. So thanks a lot. See you later.